General Masterful. Crossroads of nearly a thousand lives. A sanctuary, a haven, an edifice dedicated to the needs of those whose mathematical health is threatened. Dr. Practice, Dr. Malpractice, we're about to double an area. Please report to my area on the double. You say your patient has water on the knee? That's right. What are you going to do? Wear a slicker so I don't get splashed. There's a lot of water on the knee? Eight feet at the deep end. Eight feet. Hmm. That is terrible. Well, not really. There's a lifeguard on duty till 10. Dr. Practice, am I glad to see you? I have no idea. About what? Whether you're glad to see me or not. A rectangle was admitted. We need to double its area. Mm, who's in charge of the case? That's just it. Our intern is in charge. Not that nerdy student, Doctor... Precisely. Doctor Precisely. I don't think he's qualified to handle the procedure. Well, that's why I told you, Dr. Practice. Mm, you did the right thing. This time. Thank you, Doctor. I'm trying. Me, you Oh, they're in OR. OR? Operating room. Is the patient anesthetized, Dr. Sleep? Out like a light. Good, because the first part of this operation hurts like a son of a gun. Did you bring the extra parts? Right here, Dr. Precisely. Did you get them from the organ donor? I couldn't find an organ donor, so I got them from a piano donor. That was upright of you. No, it was grand. Never mind, it's a good tale, so we can always spin it. <laughs> Are you Dr. Precisely? Not exactly. You're not exactly precisely? No, I'm not exactly a doctor. I'm a student intern, but I play a doctor on TV. Close enough. Now, show me what you're about to do. He's about to double this patient's area. Ah, and what is your patient's size, Dr. Precisely? It is exactly... two feet wide by five feet long. And now, what is its area? That's the stuff in the middle. I know that, but what is the area, and how did you determine? To find my patient's area, I merely multiplied the length times the width. See, five times two is ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, ten? One foot squared. Uh, I am impressed. Perhaps I've misjudged you, Dr. Precisely. You're not as stupid as everyone says. <laughs> oh, you've been talking to Mom again. What we're going to do next is take this hammer and knock the rectangle all apart. Yeah, that's what these boards are for. We're going to use them to double the length and double the width. I take it back. I take it all back. You are exactly what everyone says precisely. Let's go to a diagram. Shall we? This is a drawing of your patient. It is two feet by five feet. Yes. And to find the area, I multiply two times five, and I got ten. Now, Dr. Precisely, show me what you're about to do. I will double it thusly. I will make it twice as wide, four feet instead of two, and twice as long, ten feet instead of five. Now, there we go, kids. Now, will the area double as well? You would think so. I... Oh, I see what Dr. Malpractice is driving at. Look, Dr. Precisely, the area more than doubles. It quadruples. What? Four times ten is... Four. Yikes. It's supposed to be twenty. You see, you've made your rectangle too large. To double an area, you need only double one of the dimensions. You can double the length, or you can double the width, but not both. Oh, sure. I get it. Look at this. We can double the width from two to four and keep the length the same. Four times five is 20. Exactly. Or we can double the length and keep the width the same. Five becomes ten times two is twenty. <laughs> of course, the rectangle would be so large, you probably wouldn't get it out of OR. <laughs> or? Operating room. Or we could do it yet another way. We could change the width to one and the length to twenty. That would really be a real deal. I'll say. Hi. What would you be able to do with a twenty-foot-tall rectangle? <laughs> Send it to State College on a basketball scholarship. 
Thank you, Dr. Practice. Call me Mal. Thank you, Mal Practice. I guess I'll be seeing you in court. <laughs> And so, once again, common sense and geometry have solved another problem at General Masticle. Crossroads of nearly 1,000 lives. Until next time, stay healthy and may the math be with you. Hi! I, Max Hedgeful, was watching this soap opera the other day back there on... Shh! Don't tell. On another channel, and they had this scene where the guy and the girl are having this romantic dinner. And the guy says to the girl, Tiffany, you look beautiful tonight. And she says to him, Oh, Todd, Todd, how can I ever thank you for saving my mother's life by using your superior skills in brain surgery? Wow. And how can I ever thank you for saving my brother's turnip wrench by using your superior skills in turnip husbandry? That's weird. Forget turnip husbandry, t -t -t Tiffany. Forget everything. Just let me be your husband. Oh, Todd, 5.3 bi bi billion people in the world, and I was lucky enough to find you. <laughs> yeah. Talk about mush. Except it got me thinking. I checked out what she said. There are about 5.3 billion of you Earthling-type humanoids in the world. Whoa, 5.3 billion? billion people. Woo! That's a seriously big number. You want to know how big? Well, if you decided to line up all the people in the world and have them count off here. Here, here, present, here. No. You see, y'all, I'm here. Here? It would take more than 200 years of non-stop day and night round the clock counting to get through 5.3 billion. But you know what? The world population isn't going to stand still at 5.3 billion. No way! It keeps growing. Say, at the current rate of growth, the world will double its total population every 40 years. Amazing. <laughs> Why, look what that means. If I am the world population now, see, I'm the world population, 5.3 billion, and I keep growing at the rate the population is growing now, then, ooh, oh, this is how big the world population will be in 40 years. <laughs> double. 10.6. Whoa! And then in 80 years, whoa! And in 120 years, whoa! You see how huge things can get? If you double them and then double the double and then double the double, you just doubled and 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 and. And I thought 5.3 billion was a lot. You know, I was thinking, you 5.3 billion humanoids have birthdays, right? So I got to wondering how many birthdays there might be every day. Let me see, 5.3 billion divided by 365 days in a year comes to, <gasps> yikes, 14 and one half million birthdays each day. On average, think of all the cakes and candles and of all the wishes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. 14 million humanoids. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Make a wish, everybody. <gasps> It's right this way, the perfect location for kid and play. It's sunny, spacious, with one small quirk. It's a handyman special, so it might need a little work. Are you crazy? Your taste is unrelentable. It's gonna take a year just to make this look presentable. We got a problem, cause time is tight. I already sent out invitations for the housewarming party tonight. What? I can't believe you. First you get this place and you invite our people over for the night. Yo, 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 yo. I mean, it's a handyman's nightmare. Yo, play, you just don't see the possibility. I see the possibilities of losing all our friends. All right, I'm not gonna bug out. You're right, this place is a mess. Let's at least take the floor. We'll take a measurement and buy some paint at the store. But we don't have a yardstick, a ruler, or tape. So we'll have to make an educated guess and estimate. Somebody told me once a quarter about an inch wide. So if I put coins down side by side, we'll figure out the square inches of the floor of the sum. And we can buy the right amount of paint, thanks to a rule of thumb. <laughs> But 
back and shake all week. Another rule of thumb, let's use your feet. Now a grown man's foot is about 12 inches long, so just step toe to heel and now this is wrong. <laughs> I'm six feet tall, so we can use a rule of thumb to measure the wall. Cut from fingertip to fingertip that's close to your height, so we can estimate the floor space. And we can body tonight. Why are you measuring the wall when we're gonna paint the floor? I don't wanna be rolling around on the floor. I can figure out the floor square footage this way. Six, twelve, three flips at six feet each make eighteen feet. Six, twelve, this wall's about twelve feet. Now let's figure the area. How much is 12 times 18? If I round 18 up to 20, that's 12 times 20, which is 240. We need enough paint to cover a 240 square foot floor. Better use two coats. That's 480. I generally estimate one gallon for 400 square feet or a quart for 100. So a gallon and a quart should be more than enough. See ya! Of my partner and me and how this hype party crib came to be now we can listen to the dj and the big kick drum and we'll dance all night and day thanks to rules of thumb that a baseball bat is about a meter long? <laughs> oh. Yo, here's a cool rule of thumb. Your average slice of bread weighs about one ounce. Right. Yo, Blake, check it out. Yeah. See, a dollar bill is about six inches long. Hey, that's great. That's a neat rule of thumb. Yeah, isn't it? Oh well. Hey, take a right at Sardinia. Yeah. Go past Gibraltar. Piece of cake. And hang a Rui when you hit the Atlantic. Okay. Bear right after the Canary Islands and head west across the ocean. Umbriato. This must be. America, what a joint. <laughs> Math, brought to you by Geometry, another division of mathematics. It's more than just arithmetic. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Monday, 11.43 a.m., and the area's sports enthusiasts were very malcontent with the New York football giants. They hadn't won a game in six weeks. Of course, it was the beginning of the baseball season, but New York fans are a hard group to please and won't stand for wimpy, crybaby excuses. My partner is George Frankly. The boss is Joe Greco. My name is Tuesday. I'm a mathematician. George and I had been involved with some rather bizarre cases in our days at MathNet, but the one we were presently tiptoeing around had all the earmarks of superlative when it came to weird. It all began when I walked into MathNet oh. HQ on Monday. George introduced me to a dummy. Charlie? Charlie McStick. Charlie, I'd like to meet my partner, Pat Tuesday. Oh, it's a pleasure, Miss Tuesday. And meet my ventriloquist, Edgar Bergman. Nice to meet you, Charlie, I'm sure. And you, Edgar? Edgar is a dummy. Oh? I mean, he's not talking. Well, at the moment. He, he was, but... That's why we're here. It seems that Charlie and Edgar had a third member in their ventriloquist act, a dummy named Lolly. They had just returned from a bunch of performances in the Midwest, and when they got off the plane, Lolly was missing. And the suitcase was gone? No, the case was there. Edgar picked us up. We got to the apartment. He opened mine up. Then he opened Lolly. And, and what? And he just said, oh no, it's the wrong case. Then he slammed the case shut. And he hasn't spoken since. 
That's what I had brought him here. Charlie said he didn't know what was in the other bag, just that it must have been switched by mistake and was now in Edgar's apartment. We agreed to help him. <laughs> Charlie showed us the bag. It had a three-digit combination lock. Each digit could be zero through nine. We figured that was 10 to the third or 1,000 different combinations. Only one was correct, but we got lucky. Boy, you're gonna be sorry. Sorry about what? That it isn't your case. What do you mean? Look. Wow. I wish I'd said that. Bet there's over a million bucks here. Wanna go to lunch? If you think Edgar was shocked, Wait till the other guy opens his case. What do you mean? If you had a suitcase with a million bucks in it and got home and found out it had been switched for a dummy named Lollipop... I see what you mean. Well, what are you doing? I'm calling the airline. May I? Just leave a quarter of a call by the phone. Yeah. <laughs> what airlines did you fly, Charlie? I don't know. From where I ride, they all look the same. TWM, Transworld Merge, Flight 13. Who are you calling them? What can they tell you? Number for TWM, please. Bags get switched at airports all the time. When they do, you call them and they can trace them for you. Yeah, well, I guess if I lost a million bucks on an airplane, I'd check it out. We'll locate the other traveler and just switch the bags back. Know what I'm going to say to Lolly when she gets home? What? Lolly, you look like a million, a million bucks. bucks. Yeah. What's the name, Pat? Strange. What? No one has called. Charlie, when did you get in? Last night. Maybe he hasn't missed his bag yet. Maybe. But if you had a million dollars in your suitcase, wouldn't you open it to check? I don't know. Martha always handles stuff like that. Charlie, if it's okay with you for safekeeping, we're going to take this money to MathNet. I'll write you out a receipt. Sure thing. Charlie, we'll stay on top of this. As soon as the other guy calls, we'll let you know and arrange to make the switch and get Lolly back. Thanks, Pat and George. I really appreciate your help. And so would Edgar, if he could. He'll snap out of it, Charlie, as soon as Lolly's back in the fold. I sure hope so. He's due to spray me. Spray you? My family has a history of Dutch elm disease. <laughs> Time passed and it was Tuesday, 10.43 a.m., and I put in another call to Transworld Merge. Okay, thanks very much. Well, it didn't take you long to spend the money. Sergeant Abruzzi put it under lock and key in the police property room. It'll be safe there, Pat. Yuck! What's the matter? Well, the, the cookie I was dunking dropped off. I thought this was it, but silly me, I, I bit the tea bag. George, it's been over 24 hours and still nobody has called about the missing suitcase. That's very unusual. Look at all these tags. This suitcase has done some traveling. You know, maybe this case wasn't meant to be offloaded in New York. What do you mean? I mean, maybe the plane went on to another destination after it stopped here. And the owner went with it, but the suitcase didn't. Let's check with TWM. Attention, please. NYPD's drug-sniffing dog is missing. He answers to the name of Happy. Yes, sir. How may I serve you? You regulated me. Hello, young aviatrix. I'd like you to check this bag to Atlanta, Georgia. This one to Spokane, Washington, and this one to San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm afraid that's impossible, sir. Why, what do you mean? You did it last week. Hello. And where are we flying today? We're not. Uh, at least, not now. Then you've come to the right airline. All our flights are delayed. We'd like to ask you some questions about baggage handling. I'm afraid I'm too busy at the moment. Perhaps anon. 
Oh, I'm sure Mr. Singletary can help you. These people have some questions about baggage, Mr. Singletary. Won't you step into my office? Attention, please. Amelia Earhart, please go to a white courtesy telephone. Your luggage has been found. You ask how we know where to send travel's luggage. Yes, sir. With all the flights to all the cities, how do the suitcases ever get to where they're supposed to? This map shows major airports in the United States and Canada. Each airport has a three-letter code. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, 26 to the third, or 17,576 different combinations. Wow. Did you just work that out in your head? No, it comes up all the time. We're interested in the New York airport. Well, the New York area has three major airports, Pat. Right. Kennedy, JFK, LaGuardia, LGA, and Newark, EWR. They each have a code. If you were to fly to New York from, say... Ooh. Los Angeles, California. All right. Los Angeles, California. LAX. I used to live there. I know, George. The Los Angeles, I mean. In the valley. I think I could have guessed that. Nevertheless, you check your bags at Los Angeles, and you get a claim check. JFK is printed on the check. We write on your flight number and attach it to your luggage. JFK or LGA or EWR. Right. Depending at which airport your flight is scheduled to arrive. The baggage handlers put the proper bags on the proper plane so that when you get there, so does your luggage. Well, then why do bags sometimes get switched? On your claim check, there's a serial number. It matches the one on your suitcase. And someone is there to make sure the numbers match, right? In theory. But sometimes airports are so busy, they don't have an attendant to check every bag. And suitcases do look alike, so you should always check to make sure you got the right one. Occasionally, people are in a hurry, and they don't. Mix-ups can occur. Mr. Singletary, could you look at the tag on this suitcase and tell us where it was supposed to be offloaded? This bag was put on our flight 13 from Columbus, Ohio, to New York's LaGuardia Airport. LGA. Did Flight 13 continue on from New York? No, it terminated. The plane wasn't used again until the next day when it went back into service. So whoever this suitcase belonged to had to have gotten off the plane in New York. That's right. Thank you, sir. Nothing at all? No inquiries about a suitcase from Flight 13? Thanks, sir. Oh, I... I sorry, ma'am. George, why doesn't he call the airlines about his money? Beats me. What's that? It's a graph. According to the claim checks on our mystery suitcase, these are the cities it saw. The lines show the only direct connection between these pairs. Think we may trace the owner that way? Maybe. But the problem is, except for the last trip from Columbus to New York, all the flight numbers are missing. So we know the suitcase went to the city, but we don't know in which order. Here's one way it could have gone. George, that's a Hamiltonian circuit. I did a paper on those at MathNet U. I, I cavell over Hamiltonian circuits. Then you know it shows a path around the graph which visits each city once and only once. Each segment of the graph is called an edge. No edge is used twice. Well, let's look for another way. Start in New York. Wouldn't have gone to Columbus, because we know it returns from there, and that would use Columbus twice. Right. How about New York, Cincinnati, then on to Cedar Rapids, Rochester, Chicago, Toledo, New York. That leaves out Columbus. Okay. We know that it returned from Columbus to New York. Now, New York to Chicago to Rochester to Cedar Rapids to Cincinnati to Columbus to New York. 
Leads out Toledo. I think I've got it. New York, to Toledo, to Cincinnati, Cedar Rapids, Rochester, to Chicago, Columbus, to New York. That works. And these are the only two ways it could have made the circuit. But that still doesn't explain why he hasn't called about his suitcase. You know, Pat, maybe the guy who owns the suitcase hasn't called because he can't. You mean he can't get to a phone? Well, what if the money is illegal? Illegal? Yeah, what if it's drug money or, I don't know, illegal gambling money or stolen money? What if he ripped off the mob? So if he calls the airline and they've opened up the suitcase, someone might think he has money that he isn't supposed to have. Exactly. But now if he thinks another traveler has his money, he'll want it back. That means Edgar and Charlie could be in danger. But they don't have the money. But he doesn't know that. I'll call Charlie. You better get over there. So, Charlie, this is George Frankly, MathNet. Someone may be after you and the money. Lock your doors and open them for no one. We're on our way. Not wanting to call attention to our problem by running, and to save cab fare, George and I walked with cautious surreptitiousness to Charlie's apartment. 